Let's shift focus now with the mining in Daba taking place in Cape Town this week. Nationalization has, of course, been once again thrust into the forefront of discussions. CNBC Africa's Ashley Harvey sat down with Becky Sabia, chief economist of the Chamber of Mines, to discuss this issue. Well, the ANC had the state intervention in the mining sector. Research work, which has just been concluded, has been presented to the ANC's National Executive Committee, which is being debated. We await to get the official results. There has been some report as to what may be in the results, but we don't know yet. And for us, therefore, we felt we should not debate the issues while they are being researched. Whilst the report then needs to come out, between now and the policy conference, there are going to be some debates. After the policy conference of the ANC, then there's going to be an elective conference in December. That's when the ANC will take final decisions about the, nation, the issue of the state intervention in the mining sector. Because it's no longer nationalization, but it's how the state intervenes in the mining sector. And what are the related risks to that happening? Well, the first related risk is that uh, there is a, a time lag between now and the decision-making process. And the business generally don't like an uncertainty, and therefore there is, a, as it were, an opportunity cost. And secondly is that uh, there are some investments which may go somewhere else in some other investment destinations in the world. And for us, we feel that is regrettable. However, what we know is the minerals will always be here. And so with those risks, I think it is the delay of the investments rather than those investments being lost totally. totally. Let's talk about acid mine drainage. There are 6,000 legacy mines not being maintained. South Africa has strong policies when it comes to environmental factors, but there's a problem with implementation. How should government crack down on companies not doing their part? If one looks at uh, acid mine drainage, probably the upward of 90% of it, it comes from the often ownerless and derelict mines. Those mines were owned by companies which closed the mines following the mine closure procedures at that time, and then they left. And so the state has a responsibility of dealing with the ownerless and derelict mines. However, the mining sector, through some of its members, has the solution which is self-funding where they would take acid mine drainage, process it into potable water, sell it to rent water, which is the water utility in the Gauteng area, and the issue would be sustainable. However, some of the government ministers are saying they don't want to allow the mining industry to fish, as it were, from the troubled waters, if you pardon the pun, of AMD. For us, we believe it is inappropriate. The state should be saying, if you can do it and the potable water that you produce is not going to be more expensive to rent water than other sources of water, then it should be allowing that to happen. Honestly, it is, the more, it is bureaucracy which is getting in the way of this issue which should be solved because there are a lot of other problems which this country is faced with. South Africa missed out on the previous bull run. It is said we're missing out on it again. Looking at mining production numbers, do you believe that we're missing out on a fantastic opportunity of commodity prices? We are missing out on the opportunity in that we are not growing as well as we should and we could. And the challenges are infrastructure. The primary of the infrastructural issues is rail. We are failing to move the commodities to the markets through rail. Once we get to the ports, it becomes easier. And it is because Transnet is a monopoly over the railway infrastructure, it is not allowing the private sector to play the role. When one looks at other mining jurisdictions, Australia for instance, there is limited allowance of the mining houses to operate the rolling stock. While the state owns the permanent way or the railway line, then in terms of the rolling stock, it's owned and operated by the private sector. The private sector worldwide is proven to be efficient and for us same here. So we're missing the opportunity. We're engaging with the government and saying, grant us similar opportunities like other mining jurisdictions so that we operate well. Electricity to a less extent, but water is a challenge as well because the water use licenses are not granted as they could and should. As we speak today, there's a backlog of 177 water use licenses and therefore it affects those mines 
which should be granted. And the new ones, they are slow. However, the new di Director General of Water Affairs has assured us that he's going to provide the priority to this matter and it will be resolved.